Meanwhile, in Germany, a group of serious-minded engineers founded a new society for space travel and succeeded in building rockets which finally reached an altitude of one half mile. Soon after this, the German army established its own rocket program. The development of the first rocket missiles followed. This accelerated rocket program culminated in the creation of the forerunner of spaceships to come, the V-2. Even though there were a few mishaps, the V-2 emerged at the end of the Second World War as the most successful rocket yet devised by man. Seventy-five of these captured V-2s were brought to our rocket proving ground at White Sands, New Mexico in 1945. Here, exhaustive studies and test firings were made to aid us in mapping our own newly created rocket program. It wasn't long before the sands of New Mexico shook to the roaring blast of the Viking, the Corporal, the Arrow B, and other American rockets. Rocket firing is an awesome demonstration of tremendous power. I think we should find out how it works. One of the best authorities on this subject is the rocket historian, Willie Lay. Here, Mr. Lay explains the operation of a rocket motor to some of the artists working on the picture. This is an actual propulsion unit from a V-2. And this strange looking device is both the heart and muscle of a rocket, its motor. Now, all earthbound engines have to burn oxygen from the surrounding atmosphere. But the high-altitude rocket motor has to work in outer space where there is no oxygen. To overcome this, we carry a tank of liquid oxygen here. When burned with a fuel, in this case alcohol, it produces an intensely hot torch-like flame that would quickly melt the motor. However, we cool the motor by first circulating the alcohol fuel around it until this fuel finally reaches the point where it is sprayed, along with the oxygen, into the combustion chamber. When this steady flow of alcohol and oxygen is ignited, it produces a continuous explosion which blasts the rocket away in the opposite direction. Here again we have action and reaction. 
If this motor is placed in a streamlined hull with suitable controls, it can reach a high altitude in a very short time. The V2 rocket motor only operates 65 seconds to a height of 20 miles. But then the V2 has gathered so much speed that it will coast upward to an altitude of 114 miles before gravity begins to pull it back to Earth. Notice that the rocket does not nose over in the thin upper air, but it falls tail first until it re-enters the denser atmosphere where the air, acting on the tail fins, turns the rocket nose down. 